evening and welcome to our program this evening, Recycling at Horizon House, sponsored by the Environment Committee. When the Sky Lounge was open for resident use, we jumped at the chance to get a reservation in here. We need to introduce our new residents to our very successful waste management program and we need to have something to refresh the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> never fail to do that. We can need it, need it all the time. And despite the, our experience with COVID and the disruption of the Anderson Hall renovation, our Do Dr. Wet program persevered and we have maintained a healthy and successful waste management program. Tonight serves as an introduction to our new residents on saw two new people, so we're all being refreshed. <laughs> Typically, it, well, you've been here before because you've seen the programs in Anderson Hall where we've had Cedar Grove telling us how they do their magic with our, yard, with our kitchen waste, our dirty pizza boxes, our egg cartons, and turn it into soil. And you've listened to Seattle Public Utilities tell you what they want and what they don't want in their, well, landfill, goes to landfill in Oregon. But because of the space, we decided that the thing we need to do is to have some attention paid to recycling. Because that seems to always, I bet every one of you has a question about something. <laughs> and we're very pleased to have uh, the zero waste specialist, Alyssa Campbell, here tonight to share what they do with our clean and dry recyc recyclable goods. And Barbara Brown, our EVS manager. Oh, she's speaking. Okay. <laughs> See, we appreciate you, Barbara. Is going to, because Recology doesn't take everything, but Barbara Brown has a whole room filled with things that we have that we get rid of and she collects for other places, and she'll talk to us about that. We're going to have the two presentations and then a Q&A, question and answer period. And also, for all of you who have served as a Dr. What, or are now serving as a Dr. What, as a token of our appreciation, Pick one up before you leave. It's it's a it's a the toilet paper by a company called uh, Who Gives a Crap. <laughs> and uh, years ago, I started subscribing. They came out in the early 2000s uh, because they used recycled paper for their toilet paper. Bonnie, can you hold it more? Yes, they use recycle paper for the toilet paper, but they also have bamboo toilet paper. And when the price differential narrowed enough for frugal me, I started buying the bamboo. But the wrappers are great. It makes great wrapping paper. Where do you get it? Um, online, but they also have, I think they're in some stores, but I'm not maybe not who gives a crap, but bamboo toilet paper. Yes, yes. All right, Alyssa? We're going to hear from Recology. Hello, everybody. Hi, Alyssa. You're very well. Here we go. So my name's Alyssa. I'm a Week Zero Specialist at Recology. Um, I'm going to talk to you about recycling, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about trash and compost, because you can't leave the others out. You kind of have to explain it all. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Recology and what we do at Recology. Thank you for having me here also. This is like the biggest group I've presented in front of, aside from like elementary school folks. So <laughs> really happy to be here. You're a lively group. I'm on TV. That's a first too. So great. Um, here we go. So Recology King County is the only Recology company here in Washington. We actually have lots of Recology companies all along the West Coast. The first one ever was in San Francisco. So um, they've started there and they've kind of moved their way up to Washington. Um, so it's California, Oregon, and Washington we're in. We have waste hauling and processing. We also have 
compost facilities, recycling facilities, and we're minimally invested in landfills. So we own two landfills. But we own about 18 MRFs and compost facilities. So um, not 18 of both, but just in total. That's the material recovery facilities we have. Um, here in King County, we have a few unique pieces to our business. So in addition to being a hauler and processor, um, we also have a function of our business called Streetscapes. So we do cleanups after parades, like the Super Bowl parade. We clean up after that. We take care of graffiti and any kind of events that happen. We take care of the streets after those events. Um, as well, we have four retail storefronts. So the closest one here is in Shoreline, but we also have one in Bothell, Issaquah, and in Burien as well. And so at the storefronts, you can buy items that'll help you reduce waste in your life in your lifestyle. You can bring hard to recycle items such as styrofoam, cooking oil, um, electronics, appliances, um, all of those things. Um, and then as well, something that's unique about Recology is that we're employee owned. So we don't sell stock publicly. We actually we have stock that just goes to employees after a period of time. So that's pretty awesome. And then we also do public education. So kind of like what we're doing right now. And we also go to schools, like I mentioned. We go to businesses. Uh, we just try to educate people and kind of help them recycle right and do the right thing with their waste. And beautifully pictured here, beautifully pictured here, you can see kind of the depiction of our mission. So we want to reduce what's sent to landfill. So if you see our trucks on the road, they'll say landscapes over landfill. Um, fun things like that. <laughs> you see this top picture here, there's a really big um, trash dumpster. So we want to get that trash dumpster to a little cart there and a large recycling dumpster, a large compost dumpster, because really 70% of what is sent to the landfill could have been recycled or composted instead. So there's really um, a big gap of what people realize can go to recycling and compost. So we really want to tell people how to do that um, as well, it helps people save money on their bills. If you didn't know, trash is very expensive, and compost and recycling are not as expensive. In fact, uh, multifamily, uh, multifamily properties here in Seattle, they don't have to pay for recycling, so it's better to not pay for it, right? <laughs> if you have that material, rather than putting it in the trash. So what is recycling? We have a commingled stream of recycling because we have an awesome material recovery facility. So commingled just means we take all the different kinds of materials, just like we have listed on the screen here. So we take glass, we take metals, so clean metals, we take plastics, and we take paper and cardboard. So plastics, we'll get into that. Um, we take hard plastics. So there's a common misconception of what is considered a recyclable plastic and what is not. And so I have a great example here that somebody brought. Um, so there's this plastic bag here. It says recyclable. It is misinforming. <laughs> Don't believe everything you read. Um, this is really the confusing part for people because there's lots of stuff out there that says recyclable and it is not. So the rule of thumb is anything that's like filmy or um, it's very flexible, it's not a hard plastic, um, that is good for trash. Or if you like to collect it, you can actually take that to a plastic film recycling location, which I'll list a few later. It's always good to call ahead if you're going to do that and take the time to drop that off because sometimes people discontinue their plastic film recycling. Um, continuing with what you see here, uh, we take as far as paper and cardboard goes, we take uh, Tetra Pak, which is like those milk alternatives, that like kind of waxy um, carton. Lots of people have questions about that one, so we do take that. That's a mixed paper. We take magazines, we take soft cover books. Um, as far as metals, we'll take the cans, and if you have aluminum foil and it's clean, you can actually ball it up to about a little bit bigger than the size of your fist, um, and that's actually fine to be recycled, so as long as it just doesn't have any food waste on it, it's good to go. Um, and then with glass, we ask that you separate the metal from the jar because they're two different kinds of material. So if you have two different kinds of material and it's unable to be separated, then that is unfortunately trash. So everything has to be one thing. And the same goes with plastic. So if you have a plastic bottle and you have a plastic lid, you can actually keep the plastic lid on the bottle once it's empty. That can be recycled together. Yeah, a lot of people, that's a question we get pretty much all the time. Um, 
So I like to bring that one up. And then also we talk about common contaminants. So common contaminants are basically the things that show up at our material recovery facility that do not belong there and they kind of gunk up our machine. So you see the plastic bag over there, kind of similar to this one right here. That is a contaminant. It jams up our machinery and I'll show you a video. You'll kind of see why that is. Uh, we don't take small plastics either. The way our machine works, it, it goes into the wrong stream actually. So it's too small to be recycled, so it needs to be trash. However, if you have a utensil that says compostable or commercially compostable, that is actually fine to be composted. So just, you'll have to just read the letter. I know they're kind of small sometimes to read. Or you can ask if you're at a food, if you're at a business or something and they give you the utensil, you can ask and, make, and verify with them too. Um, we have a smoothie cup here that has not been washed out, so we don't take any kind of food contaminated um, cups because that contaminates our paper and our cardboard, so it kind of turns it into compost instead of clean paper and cardboard, so we just ask that you empty, clean, and dry those ones. Um, same goes, so similarly, the paper up here, it's um, got this plastic film, so similar to the plastic bag. It's got a plastic film in there, so Two different materials. Um, you have to rip out the plastic piece on the inside if you want to recycle that. And then for styrofoam, we don't take styrofoam in the curbside recycling. However, we would take it at a recology store or there are some vendors that take it. So you'd have to set that up separately at your building. That could be a project, maybe. Um, we also do not take any kind of snack wraps, any kind of latex gloves, um, needles are biohazard. They actually show up all the time at our material recovery facility and obviously that's, it's a very scary thing for the people who are on the sort line. So we really ask that those don't be put in curbside recycling. They have to actually stop the whole line. There's like a big red button. It's like as dramatic as you think it is. You know, they do the button and then they get the tongs and they remove it. So we don't want those. Um, as well, we don't take any kind of bulky items. So. I don't know if any of you are like hauling bed frames down to your loading dock, I hope not. <laughs> it sounds like a heist, but uh, yeah, we don't want those either. They're too big for our trucks. Um, and just to reiterate, we want everything to be empty, clean, and dry. So this is kind of just the simplest depiction of that. Um, as well, if you do have something and you're not going to clean it out, it's best to just throw it in the trash. So if you have something that would be recyclable, but it's not able to be cleaned, maybe you're out and about and you don't have an intention of bringing like your lunch container home and washing it out and you don't have a sink near you, you can just throw that in the garbage. Um, another rule, good rule of thumb is to just flatten your boxes. So this safe space in your dumpster and make sure there's no overflow. I'm assuming you guys have a trash or a recycling chute or maybe you put it in a room. Okay. Um, always great to flatten the boxes. And then um, Going back to what we were talking about earlier, so these things are great to be recycled. Similarly, we have um, glass and the jar separated. So the jar top actually has to be three inches or greater in diameter. So if you have um, something like, so even if you had like a plastic top, like a, a plastic lid to something and for some reason you lost the container it was attached to, um, it's gotta be three inches or greater. So about that size. This is about like, this is not life size right here. That's like half a foot, but you, you get the gist. Do you leave the top off the three inch jar? So, yes, yeah, so you would, anything like this, so you have a glass jar and a metal lid, they need to be separated. But if you have a plastic container and you've got a really big lid for the plastic container, but it's also plastic, um, you can keep them together or you can separate them. But if they're small like this here, um, they would be trash. So. If this one's not able to go back to its plastic container, then it cannot be recycled. Cannot? Yes. Go ahead. I've got a tip. This, our name tag is three inches wide. So oh, that's there kind you of go. A, a way that's to, perfect. Yeah. I love that. But you said before Easy. you could put the top back on the plastic bottle. Yes. I'll repeat for clarity. So if you have a plastic bottle and it has a container, it can go back onto that container. That's fine. It can be recycled together. But if for some reason you already recycled the container and all you have left is this tiny plastic lid, the tiny plastic lid would just have to go in the trash. Okay. Oh, and then I'll just repeat also, uh, with your name tags, they are three inches long. So if you need a measuring device for your <laughs> lids, uh, you can use that as a rule of thumb to verify. I love that. Good 
So uh, at our recycling facility, we also don't take shredded paper. The reason for that is because the way our facility is set up, the paper actually ends up in the glass stream, so it's too small to be captured into our paper stream, and it ends up contaminating our glass stream, so we don't take it and recycle. Um, just to say for the 3,000th time, we don't take any plastic bags or wrap. This is one we just like to keep repeating throughout the presentation because it's a real problem. Um, and so the best practice is to just keep everything loose. If you use, obviously, if you use like a paper bag, that's totally fine. Um, but please do not put them in another plastic bag. So your recycling goes to our MRF, which is up here. It's a material recovery facility. It looks beautiful in this picture. It does not look this beautiful anymore, I'm just gonna say. It was built in 2014 and it was shiny and beautiful then, but it's been through a lot. So it's a little bit dusty now, um, but this is in its prime. Um, so right here, we just kind of have a little depiction of the whole circle, what happens when you recycle. So you put your recycling in your curbside bin, we pick it up with our truck, we take it to our, our MRF, and I don't know if you all can see this picture very well, it's kind of small, but this is our tipping floor, so that's basically a big mountain of recyclables. We have trucks moving that along into the sort line, and then once it goes through our entire MRF, it turns into a bale, which is these cubes that you see here. So everything is baled into its respective category. So like I mentioned, this is our MRF. Um, this is the first stage of the MRF right over there. So this is um, the first part of the conveyor belt. We usually have people, so just imagine there's a person in between each belt, or each um, bin right here. And there, each person is assigned to a specific material that they see. So if they see a plastic bag on the line, they'll take that plastic bag out. There's one person um, assigned to the plastic film. And then other people might be assigned to taking out like scrap metal pieces because that can damage our, our machinery. We do take scrap metal, but it just has to be a certain size. Obviously, you can't put like the hood of a car in <laughs> your recycling bin in. Believe me, I've, I've seen that. So <laughs> not at the Murph, but out in the field. Um, so here's a little video, if it'll play. This is the first part of our Murph. So um, after, well, after it goes to the sort line, it's going to come through here, and there's spindles that are pushing up the paper and the cardboard because it's lighter. And then everything else that's heavy is falling down through the cracks. So that's glass, um, plastic, cans, things like that. And then uh, this is later on in the MRF, but this is a magnet that is sorting through, I think, ferrous metals. I always mix it up, but it's ferrous metals because we take ferrous and non-ferrous. So the chemistry folks in here who know their, know their stuff, they can correct me. Um, I think you got it. <laughs> um, so that's a cool piece. And then we also use artificial intelligence at our MRF. So it's basically, there's light, and I'll show you the video, but it's, it's fun to watch. So I'll explain it first, and then I'll let the video play. But basically, you see the light here. Um, it's sensing the density of the plastic that's passing through. So if it likes what it sees, so it's calibrated for a certain kind of plastic. So if it sees what it likes, it's going to shoot it up with air, and then everything else is gonna fall down. So you see it kind of skipping up, it's skipping away. Yeah, it's really fun to watch. <laughs> we do tours at the MRF, um, and it's, yeah, every time. It's, it's still fun every time, I love it. Um, and then this, I just like to show this last part because we kind of have like towers and towers of bales. As you can imagine, we're processing tons of material every week. And so we've got these kind of like villages of bales. And these right here are actually curbside um, carts. So if you have a broken cart um, and you need it to be hauled away, we'll actually take it and we'll recycle it. And so these are all baled. These are dead carts that, you know, they, have, they did their time and they got cracks in them. So we have them at our facility now and they, they're bailed and they're gonna get shipped away. So I'm just gonna show the forklift, picking it up or taking it over. Where do and they the people, go to? What's that? Where do they go? So the plastic that we have um, at our facility stays in the US. So I actually have a diagram, or not a diagram. I have a little chart that kind of shows what goes where, like what percentage, so I'll, sh I'll show that in a second. So with contamination, like I've mentioned multiple times as well, this is kind of what happens. So I showed you those spindles. They get kind of wrapped up with 
all the different kinds of plastic and like if people throw like their gardening hose in the, in the recycling bin or all their metal wires, things like that. We actually have to stop the facility and someone goes in there and cuts it loose. Um, it's a dirty job. It's a dirty job. Um, but yeah, so plastics, hoses, we don't want any of those things in there because they get caught. Same with liquids and food waste, so they contaminate paper and cardboard and it, things get pretty gunky and messy. So it doesn't smell amazing in there either if you've kind of pieced that together. It smells a little gross in the MRF. <laughs> but not too bad. Everybody's wearing masks in there too, so I don't think they smell it as much. Um, so this is a diagram that I was mentioning earlier. So this. Um, at the bottom it says this is as of 2019. This is roughly still the same in 2022. Um, <clears throat> and really the only thing that would change is maybe where our metal and steel goes. But as you can see here, about 28% is recycled in Seattle. So that's glass and that's metal, steel, and iron, so the ferrous materials. And then here in the Northwest and North America, so we say Northwest and North America because we send some stuff to Canada. Canada gets a little bit of our cardboard and paper. 100% um, of our plastics and our aluminum is staying over here. And then in Asia, we are sending some paper and cardboard. So we do not send any plastics overseas. Um, if any of you have heard of China's sword policy, that's the reason why we don't do that anymore. It's because China was kind of fed up with um, America's dirty plastic, or everybody's dirty plastic, really. So we kind of had to clean our act up and uh, figure things out. So even in, so some of the, the states that will take our plastics are like Kentucky, um, places in the Midwest will take our plastics. And so I just have kind of a list of what your recyclables turn into, just so you can kind of get a picture of what happens. So cardboard, when you recycle that, it can turn into cereal boxes, paperboard, paper towels, tissues, printing, and writing. So, um, if you've seen like on the printer paper, it says 30% post-consumer recycled. So that's what that means. Is like that paper came from everybody else who recycled. And the same thing goes for mixed paper. So like paper towel rolls, new paper board, very similar recycling process there. But with um, plastic, the interesting thing about plastic is that the comp the chemical components of it kind of uh, change it so that it it can't become the exact same thing again, the way that um, you know metals would. So detergent bottles are turning into buckets, containers, frisbees, milk jugs are turning into play sets, plastic lumber, new bottles. What do I have on time, Bonnie? Okay, I'll keep going. Um, so for plastics, we've got uh, food storage containers, plastic dishware, uh, PET plastics, so your, your water bottles are turning into can turn into carpet, backpacks, polar fleece, sleeping bags, things like that. Aluminum turns into aluminum. <laughs> I would bring a car in here to show you that, but you know that. So um, metal is awesome. Um, same thing with glass. Glass can just turn right back into glass. So we'll get into compost. You, what's the time? We can skip compost. What's, what's the time? Oh All right, <laughs> I'll skip along. You guys, you guys have had Cedar Grove here, so you should know what compost is. We'll just do, we're doing this lightning round, we'll just keep going. So with compostable items, just make sure they're labeled as compostable. Um, and then we don't take any kind of animals or pet waste in compost. None of these things can go in compost. So similar to recycling, there's compost contaminants. We don't want any of this in compost. Your compost goes to Cedar Grove, big surprise. <laughs> takes 90 days for your banana peel to turn into dirt. How amazing is that? Um, it's an awesome process. This is kind of like the overview. Cedar Grove is located in Maple Valley and Everett. So they have two facilities. It's very similar to recycling where it's got a closed loop. Garbage, everything else. So the things that don't get to go in compost or recycling go into garbage, as you can see here. And your garbage goes by rail to Arlington in Oregon. So Seattle has so much trash that it can't go to King County landfill. So it's got to go by rail. Um, all of King County, uh, if you took all the trash from King County, um, that so and then you took all the trash from Seattle, Seattle's got about a third of like all the cities. That's how much trash Seattle has. And this is the King County landfill. 
So this is Cedar Hills. It's the most beautiful landfill in the world. <laughs> as you see Mount Rainier. Here's a fun site. If you ever have a random item, you don't know where to put it. King County, what do I do with? Sorry, we're doing speed rounds, so you're just really going to have to be on your A game here. Uh, and I know we've got this on film, so you can revisit. Plastic film recycling, so if you go to plasticfilmrecycling.org, you can look up what kind of plastic film they'll take as well. I've listed a few locations nearby that hopefully still do this. Um, the Safeway on Madison Street apparently takes it. Same with the Madrona Grocery Outlet. And then the Safeway on California Avenue, and then Market Time Foods, although I've heard that Market Time Foods no longer takes it, so that's unfortunate, but always call ahead if you're gonna do that chore. Um, also, Seattle has a where does it go tool. So this is like a search engine, but it's specific to recycling and trash and compost. It's really awesome. This is just a reminder that we have our Recology stores. We've got four of them. They look kind of like this. And that's my presentation. So thank you so much for listening. I apologize for that speed around at the end, but happy to answer any questions that you have um, when, I think, when Barbara's done. Okay, thank you, everybody. information is heard because I'm going to focus on what we have at Horizon House. Um, so I just want to go over all of the different, I'm moving forward because when you get closer back that's when it starts to fizzle. Um, it's Barbara. Um, so when we have our waste here at Horizon House, there's a lot of different streams. So I'm just going to go over all the different things that those items can go to. And the goal, of course, as everyone here, is to prevent, is to get as little as possible into the landfill. So we get everything in the right spot that it needs to go so it doesn't get put in landfill because it's been contaminated or it's in the wrong spot or you've thrown it away in the wrong spot, not realizing, okay? So first of all, we have regular recycling, which of course we just talked about, which is cardboard, glass, um, hard plastics, clean, make sure it's clean, it's dry, and that would go in the regular recycling. Then of course we have the compost we talked about. Compost would be any kind of food product or a compostable container that would be food. Um, it wouldn't have any kind of a, no waste, no anything like that, even if it's an animal, and a waste, anything. It's just food or a compostable containers. It also could be a little bit of shred. You might have a little bit of shred as long as it's plain paper that could go in compost, or um, even if you're, let's say you're having a pizza, that pizza box is compostable because it's got food, as long as it doesn't have any plastic parts to it, it can go into the compost. Um, we also, if you're talking about things being kept out of the landfill, we do have Goodwill, so we have a Goodwill bin available. We have um, Monday Market. I may, I'm bringing up all these ways of keeping stuff out of landfill. So we have Monday Market. They have baskets around where if you have small items you can put in there and they can decide if they want them or not. A lot of times if they don't want them, they will give them to Goodwill. And if they're just really not usable, then they might either get recycled or they get like books, for instance, if they're damaged, they a lot of times go in the recycling. Um, we have, of course, we collect hazardous waste. Not everybody knows that. So if you have a chemical that you're not sure if it's hazard or not, we don't want that to go into the landfill if it's going to be hazardous. So you can call up and say, I've got waste. Or else we have a bin, also on B3, that it can go into. Um, if you're confused about it, you can always call. You can always call and ask the question. And there's been times that we'll go pick it up from you because you just, I don't know what this is. I'm not sure. Is it waste? I'll go pick it up from you. So that way you're not trying to, you're trying to do the right thing, right? Okay. We have corks. We recycle those. We collect Brita. That goes back to the Brita company. Uh, Brita filters. Uh, we collect printer ink, correct? 
Um, all of those things can be collected. All of those things, some of those things like the um, corks, they can they actually go into your waste waste rooms. There's containers for them. Uh, we have we collect like I said, hazardous waste. Batteries are considered hazardous waste, right? You don't want to put those into landfill either. Um, so those we collect as well, and those get sent off to a company. All of our, our, our hazardous waste goes to a company that tries it, does it, disposes it safely, but also tries to recycle the products as well. Okay. Um, e-waste. We collect e-waste. So if you have a TV, a computer, printer, you want to get rid of it, we'll collect it. You don't get charged for that. Um, that also gets sent out to a company that recycles, destroys hard drives, and recycles the, the parts of it as much as they, as much as they can. We do collect styrofoam. We have a limited amount, but I don't think we collect the amount that we can. We have a bag in B3 as well that's accessible from the north side. You come around. There is a bag for B3 where we can collect styrofoam, and then every other week we can put two bags of styrofoam out with the trash, and they collect it. And it's every other week because we've reduced, we bought a new compactor, and we've reduced how many times they're picking up so we save on gas, they're only collecting our waste now every other week, our landfill, wow. okay? Um, of course, we talked about that, the waste, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the waste recycle rooms. I think the biggest problem that we have is sometimes people don't realize which item, they'll put compost, for instance, in the recycling. And there's times that they're actually contaminating it, just like yes. you were saying it. And now the items that are in the recycling can't be recycled because they've been soaked through, they have food on them. Sometimes they can, and if we can definitely take that out. Um, we've had things like uh, plastics, that plastic gloves, plastic bags. Um, like somebody said, I find that people will take a bag of bottle caps the bottle caps, like they'll collect the bottle caps. I think that was something that was maybe something in the way past. Yeah, and so they'll throw that in the recycling. It doesn't get recycled, it just gets, basically if we send that out to recycle, we don't want to, but if we accidentally do, now they have to throw it away. So it's, uh, to, it, it ends up going in the landfill, and now it's a two-step process, so it, it takes twice as long, right? So we definitely don't want to do, don't want to do that. Can you hear me now? Okay, like an ice cream cone. Thank you. That was a good one. Now I want an ice cream cone. <laughs> um, so it's really important to keep them separate. If you are putting something in recycling, it must be clean and dry. No matter what it is. If you, and like I said, if you're confused, it, it's okay to, you've got your Dr. Watts, you've got me, you can call, ask the question, I'll come. There's one other thing that I wanted to mention, and not many people take advantage of it, you may not know about it. If you have a lot of recycling, let's say you moved in last year, and you kept a few boxes in your storage, and you finally went through them. Oh, I've gotta go through this. And now you've got 15 boxes, you've got, it's, it's not just for new residents. If you, or you've, got, you've gone through files, they're not important files, they're not something that you feel needs to be shredded, but you just, you just like, oh, let's just get rid of all of these. Maybe you've got a lot of books that are old and musty, they're not really, you don't wanna donate them. Call us up, we won't charge you. We'll come, to put them outside your door, we'll pick them up and take them away. We would rather they get recycled rather than you getting frustrated and having to throw it down the chute because you don't, you don't know what, to, or you don't know what to do with it. So if, You've got a large TV. I'm not going to charge you to pick that large TV up and put it in e waste. Does that make sense? The yeah. whole point of us not charging you for things like that is so it's easier for you to put things in the proper spot. You know, like, yeah, we're not going to go grab your garbage and put it in the, in the waste room for you. I'm sorry. It's just something you have to do yourself. But if sometimes these large items are heavy, they're cumbersome. Let's say you've got some things for Goodwill and you can't get in the Goodwill door and you've got a big bag of Goodwill, give me a call. I'll send someone to pick them up. I'm not gonna charge you for that. 
I say that because we charge people for things, so I want to <laughs> be clear that I'm not going to charge you for that. Because we want you to do the right thing, we want to support that, and that's our way of supporting it, is to, to you know, be available, because it's, sometimes it's really cumbersome, sometimes it's difficult to get to. Um, so the last thing is that we know that when they redid the central tower, trash rooms, some of the signage disappeared, some of the signage changed, and we do need to update that. And that has been on my list a little bit too long, by the way, of things that we need to complete. And Bonnie and I are talking and getting, we want to have them all the same, and we're going to put the same posters in all of the trash rooms, not just Central Towers, but North Tower, West Wing 2, so people can look at them and see what goes where. So we just want to update those because some of our posters have plastic bags, they have things that just aren't, aren't available anymore. So we want to make sure that they're more contemporary and they're 2022. Um, that's kind of all I have to say. Okay? I have one question, people. What about light bulbs? Yep. So regular light bulbs and um, LEDs, it's really trash. Fluorescent light bulbs, we will collect because that is considered a hazardous waste. So if you have fluorescent, there is a bin on B3 that's accessible without stairs from the North Tower. If you go down the North Tower elevators and you walk across the garage, there's the bin right there. But really, the, the ones that are considered hazardous waste are the fluorescent. There's not as many as there used to be, um, but those are considered hazardous. So those are the ones that would be collected in there. Questions for all this session? Yeah. That's more right now from that those questions and answers over there. So I think you have to put it right, right next to you. How about, how about printer uh, cartridges? They're going to get out of the box. They have a computer room. There are boxes on the There is a box in the computer room on B2. And if you're confused, Bonnie said you can call her. And there's also most of the um, most, of most of the new central tower ones all have a little box that say printer cartridges on them. No, no. 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 all right, ours does. <laughs> Our floor does. I didn't put it there. And that happens because somebody is willing to collect your cartridges from your floor and take them and take proper care of them but uh, the computer room has a big box and so I go down there anytime I'm called and then I take care of those next question do we, do we need to remove all the tape from cardboard boxes so ideally yes we do because it's a separate material so if you're able to get as much tape off of those that really helps us out because the tape is not the same as the cardboard it's a really good question um, I, I just wanted to say i'm not interrupting you but i just wanted to say that if you we break down the boxes we'll break them down too if they if you have a box please break it down if you're in the b1 but if you can't break it down we'll break it down for you that's okay we do break all the boxes down but. so a question about clean and dry uh in the first place uh you know some things take a lot of water even hot water to clean is it worth it uh, is there there's a trade-off between the energy cost and, and the uh, recycling the item, which you, one has to think about. And the other is, uh, I mean, if you if you rinse out your your milk bottle, it's clean, but drying it is something else again. I mean, yeah. <laughs> is that an issue? So yeah, those are good questions you're bringing up. So like the milk bottle um, having a few drops left, that's okay. Like it's not the end of the world if there's just a little bit of liquid in there. Um, and then for like a peanut butter jar, because that's really the worst one, right? Um, it's, people have brought this up, you know, the trade-off between water. It's kind of it's kind of comparing apples to oranges in a way, because it's kind of hard. You know, you kind of really have to dig into the rabbit hole if you're going to compare the environmental impacts. Uh, but a really easy thing to do if you've got a dishwasher is just toss that baby in the dishwasher and it'll be looking sparkly brand new. 
Um, also, leaving it to soak too usually helps for some of those harder items too. Because I don't have a dishwasher in my apartment, so that's what I do. And that's you know good elbow grease too, washing those things up. <laughs> Um, I've been confused about clean, dry, take-out food containers that are coated. Do they get composted if coated? This is such a good question. I'm very glad that you brought it up. So there is a, um, a brown paper, card. It, it's cardboard looking and it's got like a liner. That I think that's what you're referencing. And it says recyclable at the bottom. So that one it's very difficult because most of the time it's got kind of food grease on it when you're done with it and it's got this other component of being messy so it's really not recyclable when it's done and it's not compostable either because the lining the really the defining factor for why a container like that would be compostable is if it says commercially compostable and the lining it would be instead of a petroleum base it would be like the starchy base that the you know like the green bags are made of so that would be the main difference. And I've only really seen those um, cardboard containers that say just recyclable. And so usually those are just trash because they've got grease on them and they're not really recyclable. So really great question. If you shop at PCC, their deli items come in those brown boxes and they are compostable. Oh, they are. At PCC. Yeah. I don't know about Safeway and QFC. Does this work? Am I, is it working? No. Yeah. Oh. It does. Oh, I have a loud voice. Oh, the big giant gap in the recycling is the plastic bags. And I just moved here. No, you need to use the speaker. Okay. Bang, bang. I'll give you that microphone. Does this work? Yes. The big giant gap are the plastic bags. Yes. And I just moved here from uh, my house, and we had Ridwell, and they took plastic bags. So I want to know if Horizon House can connect to Ridwell, and where does Ridwell take the plastic bags so that maybe we can connect to that? That's my question. <coughs> Right now, I don't think Gridwell does commercial, and we're considered commercial. And they also have a lot of locations that they won't do. They will only do runs. I have it at my home, just to let you know that. But there's, they won't do a run unless they have enough customers. I don't know if that makes any sense. So they won't. They will open the spot. Like if you say, "Oh, I want you. I want to get you." If they don't have enough close customers, they won't. They won't even open it up. And I don't think in this area they have it available. Well, but it's board? not available for commercial, which we are. We're 400 customers right here. Oh, yeah. we're, we're also. But where do they take it? Because maybe we can take our plastic bags. Where would they go? I have no idea. But. We have an account with them, so I can ask them that question. Um, I have this container, um, and I get a lot of produce, blueberries, raspberries, and I wash them and dry them, and I want to know if it's recyclable. That is recyclable. That right there, that, that container that you've got, that is recyclable. It's a hard plastic. Yep, I'll just, we can do a whole thing. Looks beautiful. It's nice and clean. Great job. <laughs> if it's got like, sometimes it has a little thing on, you know, it has like the little to hold the berries at the bottom. You have to make sure you take that piece out, which you did. Right. So, but this is made of the same kind of plastic as like a water bottle. And, and the other container is um, milk, milk cartons. Um, rinse them out, make sure they're dry. They're yeah. usually plastic on the outside or the inside, so that's the other thing I'm questioning. So are you talking like the the carton ones, the milk, like it's a, yeah, so that's... Um, almond milk and yes. yeah, that kind of stuff. So we do take that. It's the type of material it's called is Tetra Pak. So that gets sorted in our mixed recycling and that's our, our mixed paper. That's what that ends up in. And we do take that.
This is a question for Barbara. Um, I I wonder, and maybe. The answer is it's not. Hold it up right now. A non question. But anyway, I, I wonder about every day when the. Um, particularly the recycling bins are, or even the garbage bin, are emptied. They may or not may or may not be very full. But does the person collecting always take the whole bag no matter what? Or is there some, like if it's only a fourth full, they don't take it or? So it gets difficult because we usually pull in the evening. Not always, but usually. And for compost, we have to pull it every day, okay? But the bag, the compost bag, is also compostable. Yes, I okay? understand it. But green. the recycling, yeah, the, the green bag that we have, that yeah. the whole bag gets, is composted. Yeah. Um, so that has to be pulled because we, the smells are <laughs> Anyway, and you, can, you will know when it didn't get pulled because I will, you will be calling me. Um, but the recycling, it, it depends. Usually, yes, because it usually is quite full. People do fill, people recycle here, so they do fill up. Um, but if there's like one item in, no, they won't. They will not. It just seems it's a lot of bags. Right, they will not. And but the compost, don't. they will. Even if it's very little, they will pull it. And it, yeah. I know there's at least a few of us here who use have hearing aid batteries. Do they? Do we have to put those with batteries, or what? What do we do with those? They're so small. Mm -hmm. We do collect batteries, and those are in our waste recycle room. It's labeled batteries. It there should be right next to the corks, and that's considered a hazardous waste. So we definitely don't want that to be put into landfill. We want them to send them back and have the um, companies that collect that and you know, deal with it safely. And I just wanted to mention when we talk about recycling plastics and metals, when, when, when um, Alyssa, <laughs> when Alyssa mentioned that it needs to be one type, that also includes, sometimes we'll find in the recycling, somebody goes, well, this is a metal battery, or this is, no, 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 it's, that's, it's a battery, it's a battery. If it's got electronics in it, it's, if, it, it's not one item, it's, it's several, just think of it like that. It's not, if it's not one item, it's probably not recyclable, but you can call, because there might be exceptions to that. Barbara, how about your housekeepers? <laughs> How about our housekeepers? Yeah. If you recycle and you have separate bags, they'll keep them separate. And if they're not, I want to hear about it. Okay. If they, if you mix, they're not going to dig through it. No, I know they won't dig through it. Right. But I go after some of the cleaners have finished some of the rooms on our floor, and I go in and I find trash inside the recycle, and I don't know if they came with the waste paper baskets or whatever and the, just dumped. The best way to deal with that, if you see it, tell me this happened and this is the time and this okay. is the floor because I'll know who's there. Okay, so you are training them all. We do train them. Home. We do train them and okay. what we usually come across is that when somebody doesn't have their trash separated, somebody goes, well, I saw they had a bag and it had everything in it. Okay. But if somebody tells me, no, that's not true, I will go investigate. I will you know, find out who it was, I'll talk to the employee, that's, but if you don't, if I say, well, your housekeepers don't, re, you know, don't recycle, that doesn't help me to figure out what, who the problem is, where the confusion is. Okay. Uh, that's what my Also, the caregivers, right? yes. a lot of caregivers yes. Uh, yes. don't do the right thing. That's what I was going to ask, if they were, yeah. if you do, because we notice the caregivers yeah. just dump everything in the same yeah. place. Um, I'm probably the touch point for caregivers because I work with the staff uh, right now I think Lori Warfield Larson is doing the job and basically and I've done it and it works it's somebody calls and says the caregivers I know it came from this apartment because mm -hmm. she had an envelope with her name on it and she has caregivers mm -hmm. and so I can call her and say okay this happened on this day at this time in this waste recycle room and then she knows where to go to say, 
hey, train this person. Well, don't they train them right off the bat before they even start working? Well, yes, they do, but Horizon House asks for more training than other places. So, and they're not the same people. They, they have the same staffing problems <laughs> the whole world has. I, I wonder when I like I have a, a plastic container of blueberries to throw and I'm in, it's empty, but there's a paper label on it. Can I leave the label on? Kind of depends on how hard it is to remove. Like if it's gonna like you know, some of them are really glued on there, yeah. and like I like in that scenario, don't worry about it. Uh, but if you're able to remove, it's the same thing with like you know cardboard. You, if you're able to remove the the label, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd like to know about the um, containers from the bistro. They used to be drinkware, and now sort of a mix of things that it, you really have to look. The, the, the problem that we, the problem that dining services has, is that they order compostable containers and sometimes they get none because the supplier doesn't have them and they don't know until they go to restock that you know these are not compostable so that's our our responsibility because they're trying their hardest to get it all compostable but you still have to have to watch it the, and the latest are the little dressing containers. Those were all greenware. And then all of a sudden, they couldn't get them. So, so you could be, and another kind of thing, because I don't see that well, but if, you, if I run my thumb on the bottom of those containers, greenware writes a lot of things there. <laughs> and so it's really rough. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love that. There are, of, there are a couple of other um, very common things in our apartment that uh, it's like, well, where does this go? One of them is yogurt cups, and the other is the hard plastic that meats come in wrapped over and over and over again yes. with cellophane. And, and, I mean, there's so many plus something that absorbs the moisture in the bottom of the, the plastic okay so for yogurt cups those if they're cleaned out those are fine to be recycled that's a number five plastic so it's the same as like the lid of a coffee cup it's the same kind of plastic and that is fine to be recycled and then um, for the meat container, so I don't know if you mean like the styrofoam like holder not that okay you said it's like a hard container um, I'm not quite sure I'm picturing what you're describing, but um, I will say if it's a hard plastic and it's not breaking, so it's not a film, um, if it's clean, then it can be recycled. But uh, the too hard plastic, like when you're crossing a line, is like plexiglass or like anything as hard as like safety glasses. Like that is crossing the line. We can't take that for recycling. That's almost like glass. Like it's hard to, it's not, I mean, it's, the, the melting temperature is different. It's not a very common plastic, so that's why I'm comparing it to glass because it's so hardy. But um, if it's just, you know, I can't say for sure because I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but if it's a hard plastic, it's not breaking when you bend it, and it's not filmy, then if it's clean, it should be able to be recycled. Yeah, of course. And while I have the floor, when you order things online or via the telephone and you're asked and they're going to be mailed to you most of the time i found that the companies have a place to for a comment or anything like that ask to have them sent with the least amount of plastic and they're responding to that they're starting um amazon now has a paper uh padded envelope that's paper but it's padded with something that's 
completely compostable. I, I have one other compost question. I have a vacuum cleaner. For years I had one with a bag. This one just has a cylinder and you empty the cylinder. Can the dust and dirt that's in that vacuum cleaner go in compost? So that's a good question, but I would say no because the common theme with uh, vacuuming is you're not exactly sure what's going to be ending up in there. So you could have, you know, little tiny buttons in there or some kind of, you know, a piece of metal. So I don't think Cedar Grove would want that to be sent to compost, unfortunately. But like hair by itself technically is compostable, dust, you know, those sort of things. That is technically compostable, but yeah. This is a tiny thing, but um, in the Tetra packs, the little plastic um, thing at the opening, do you prefer, that? does it make any difference? Is it helpful if we take it off before we put it in the recycle? So the cap? No. Yeah, like the, ca well, the cap and the, and the thing that holds the cap. If you're able to remove that, that's amazing, yeah. But it's, it's kind of hard, I mean, uh, the cap, separate so the cap would be trash because the, the container itself is like a cardboard paper mix it's got a lot of different things going on but um, if you're able to take that out that's great yeah that's awesome all you need is a beer woman oh yeah oh okay really life hacks i love that beer opener I think now we're going to say thank you to Alyssa and to Barbara, uh, yeah. and thank you all for coming. Uh, and Dr. What, don't forget your bamboo.